Welcome everyone. Today we're delving into the world of Ruby on Rails, the powerhouse framework revolutionizing the web and mobile development landscape. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about Ruby on Rails, from its core concepts to its real world applications. So let's jump right in. First off, what is Ruby on Rails? Ruby on Rails, often simply referred to as Rails, is an open source application framework written in the Ruby programming language. It was created by David Heinemeyer Hansen in the early 2000s and has since gained widespread popularity. We'll get into more details, but at a high level, Rails follows the model view controller architectural pattern, which simplifies web development by providing a structured framework for building robust and scalable web and mobile applications. Rails also leverages the principle of convention over configuration. Stay tuned, we'll discuss those topics further in depth in a bit. So what is Rails used for? Ruby on Rails can be used for a wide range of web applications, from simple business apps to complex enterprise level platforms. When it comes to web development, Rails has left a significant mark. Some of the world's most popular websites, like Shopify and GitHub, were built using Ruby on Rails. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of Rails? One of the key advantages is the principle of convention over configuration. See, in traditional frameworks, developers often have to configure various aspects of their application explicitly, specifying file paths, database connections, and more. Rails, on the other hand, makes sensible assumptions for these configurations. This reduces decision fatigue, allowing developers to focus on writing code that immediately adds business value rather than configuration getting a new project off the ground. By following conventions and benefiting from the defaults provided by Rails, developers can build applications more rapidly. This is particularly advantageous for meeting business deadlines. Another key advantage is that Rails is open source and its development is a collaborative effort involving numerous contributors from around the world. The contributors to Rails have also developed the official Rails guides, online documentation that provides in-depth tutorials and explanations on various aspects of the framework. This documentation is not only helpful for newcomers, but also for experienced developers seeking to expand their knowledge. The Rails community is vibrant and there are many ways to interact, from conferences and meetups to online communities such as Discord, Mastodon, and Reddit. There are many great podcasts such as Remote Ruby, Ruby Rogues, Ruby for All, and many more that discuss development and news within the community. Many Rails developers maintain blogs and publish tutorials, sharing their experiences, insights, and solutions to common problems. These resources are valuable for both beginners and experienced developers looking for advanced tips and techniques. Some of our favorites are Boring Rails by Matt Swanson, Writing Software Well from Akshay Kot, and the Go Rails YouTube channel. One of the disadvantages of Rails is its learning curve. While Rails is known for its developer-friendly conventions, newcomers to the framework need to learn those conventions, especially if they're not familiar with Ruby or Rails. Some aspects of the framework can be confusing initially, and it may take some time to fully grasp how everything works under the covers. You'll hear some talk on the internet that Rails is not great for application performance, and I heavily disagree. Rails may not be the best choice for applications that require extremely high performance and extreme levels of low latency. Notice I used the word extreme. The framework's dynamic nature and interpreted language, Ruby, can lead to slower execution compared to compiled languages such as C or C++. We have worked on many large Rails applications that have request rates averaging 50 milliseconds or less. With any framework, development techniques can be abused, leading to less than optimal performance. Most often, performance issues stem from overcomplexity or disregarding basic performance guidelines, such as efficiently querying the database or efficiently rendering UI in your application. Okay, great. We've talked a little bit about Rails. If you're interested in getting started, I have some notes for you. I think the initial thing is just proceed to the official Ruby on Rails guides. We'll provide a link in the notes below. These guides are excellent for getting Rails installed and getting started with the framework. I also highly recommend checking out other online tutorials, courses, and books to round out your grasp of the fundamentals. We recently migrated a client off of a product struggling from years of built up technical debt that led to excessively long delivery times and ongoing stability issues. The product we migrated away from required active ongoing maintenance just to keep their production environment running. That product was built with Angular and the .NET framework, relying on an overabundant and overly complex maze of stored procedures. Not the easy maze you walk through at the county fair. This was a complete mess. No exit without burning the thing down. So we started over from scratch. 
zero lines of Ruby on Rails code, but a talented new team taking over with some industry experience under their belts. The previous team had four engineers. We rebuilt the entire product from scratch with two Rails developers. The newly built product using full stack Rails and Hotwire is now supported by one developer that does new feature development and maintenance. More importantly, the product that used to have average page loads measured in seconds now has average page loads around 50 milliseconds and the timelines for delivering features and bug fixes are measured in days rather than months. Rails and a couple of great devs from our team are the heroes here. That wraps up our journey through Ruby on Rails from its fundamentals to a real world example. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have a project in mind or need expert guidance in application development, don't hesitate to reach out to me. There will be a Calendly link in the description below to book a call. We're here to help turn your ideas into reality.